Stevie Wonder and Sir Duke. Jeremy Vine here, BBC Radio 2. Very busy day for us. We talked about the new Prime Minister. We're talking now about the Carl Beach case. This man exploited the whole system, made a series of absolutely ridiculous allegations and has been convicted. We're joined by Peter Saunders, founder of the National Association for People Abused in Childhood. Just want your thoughts, really, Peter. Hi, Jeremy. Well, I agree with what your earlier contributor, Simon, said. Um, his primary concern, to his huge credit, as somebody who's, who suffered at the hands of a, a malicious and false allegation, is that this must not detract or divert attention away from the wider issue of child protection and the many survivors who are coming forward to report crimes and to report their perpetrators. Um, Carl Beach would probably in another life be be, be a nominee for a, an, an Oscar-winning performance in terms of how he hoodwinked so many people. He contacted me some years ago at NAPAC, um, never met the guy, never spoke to the guy, and NAPAC, as you know, Jeremy, receives thousands of inquiries every year from survivors, uh, and we, we don't question the validity of, of, of people coming forward. We, we take them at, at, at their word, and I certainly took him at his word. And then he subsequently built a, built a picture of, of abuse, uh, nothing to do with us, um, that clearly got him a great deal of attention. He Did got you meet some, him then in person? I, no, I didn't meet him personally. I never even spoke to him, but it was an email exchange. And right. in fact, I, I, I passed those emails to the police in 2017, I think it was, when they began this investigation. Because if, if nothing else, NAPAC is ultra tra transparent about what mm. we do and, it, and, and what we know, if there's anything to do with criminal justice, we will we'll pass that in. And particularly if it's child protection, we right. will always pass it to, to the, uh, the authorities. The sequence seems to be that they, he, he told these stories, he was believed initially, then it all fell apart. Then the police got onto him, raided his home, found a lot of images of child abuse. He was convicted, but he then fled. He went yes. and lived in a forest in Sweden. He's then brought back from Sweden to face the music. And it's that issue at the centre of it that this man himself was a paedophile, which does that in some way explain why he then went on to create this web of lies? Was he trying to escape his own wrongdoing? What was going on? Um, I, you know, I don't think we'll, we'll ever know the, 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 full, the full story, Jeremy. As, as you said, it certainly is a, a, a criminal, a criminal trial like no other. But when it came to light that this man was an abuser and people who access images of child abuse are, in my book, <laughs> abusers themselves, and, of course, he... he he, he, he committed some other pretty un, pretty unpleasant crimes. Um, that may well have been the catalyst for him to try and create something else of a diversion. And, you know, a, a conversation that I've had many times over the years, I probably had it with you once or twice, Jeremy, is that, that there is a myth of people who are abused become abusers. But, and it's a big but, occasionally somebody who is very damaged does go on to cause enormous damage themselves. And I would really hope that before this man or after this man is, is sent to prison, which he undoubtedly will be and quite rightly uh, on Friday, I would hope that somebody looks into what went on for him as an individual, um, not to in any sense exonerate him, far from it, but to try and understand his very, very bizarre behaviour. At NAPAC every day, as you know, we hear from hundreds of survivors of abuse of these dreadful, dreadful crimes. And it's in nobody's interest, absolutely nobody's interest, for a false and malicious allegation to um, to have any kind of credence. And the, the police are going to get in, are coming in for a lot of stick over this. But, you know, he didn't only con the police. He conned lots of people. He was a, a volunteer at the NSPCC. Well, that's the thing. You he know. Got, so he's a paedophile who managed to get in. He's a, a, a school child safety expert. Yes. He went giving lectures for the NSPCC on how to spot victims of sex abuse, and he was a, a, a paedophile himself. And what? So is this because paedophiles will always go for the job of... of 
I don't know, the safety expert and all that? Is that where they, how they hide? We, we, we know that, um, I mean, other than people like Jimmy Savile who, who, who hid in plain sight, many paedophiles and abusers will seek out jobs positions in, 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 in society that will give them an access to children. We know, we know that. And the other thing, and again, I think uh, Beach up until this time, up until his conviction, was seen as a credible, uh, as a manipulative cunning, probably at times very charming individual, and these are all the boxes that abusers tend to tick, which is why it's very, very difficult to apprehend and convict them most of the time, Jeremy. Thank you very much indeed. Peter Saunders, founder of the National Association for People Abused in Childhood, speaking about the conviction of Carl Beach. (laughs) 